So first, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, my name is Tyler Winnett. I'm the IRA Business Development Manager at Eckerd Enterprises. I'm joined by my CEO and good friend, Troy W. Eckerd, and Business Operations Manager, Brendan Walsh of Rocket Dollar. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. No problem. And so first today, we are going to, Troy is going to teach us a little bit about mineral rights, um, the oil and gas industry, and kind of what that all looks like um, from an investment standpoint. And then we'll hand it off to Brendan. He will kind of show you what Rocket Dollar has done with the checkbook control IRA, uh, opening up your own LLC, and what all that looks like from an alternative investment standpoint. So. And then after Brendan's presentation, uh, we'll actually turn it over for Q&A. So any questions you guys have, uh, please type them in, in the Q&A box. And uh, we'll get started with Troy first. Sounds good. So you're going to hand the screen over to me, Tyler? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, says I can't, so. There you go. You're a good man. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. All right. And I believe this is the right one, we hope. Well, first off, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join uh, Brendan and myself and Tyler. Um, I find that the, uh, the airwaves are extremely busy with everyone trying to communicate their message uh, in a very different world the last uh, 90 to 120 days. Um, I find myself uh, really looking at a lot of Zoom meetings and participating in a lot of podcasts and webinars and Really, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's almost facilitated making information more accessible. It's just a matter of choosing your time of day and that information. So Brendan and I are really grateful that you guys have joined us. And what we'd like to do is make it worth your while by talking about an alternative asset such as mineral rights here in the United States. And of course, Brendan will show you some of the ways their company can help you facilitate that. So I'll get started. First off, uh, to a little background on our company, uh, Eckerd Enterprises has been around at least I have, since 1985 in the oil and gas industry. Uh, I started my career off as an investment counselor and broker with a small firm out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, I was born and raised in South Texas. Uh, currently, I have about 15 employees. We're invested in pipeline businesses, natural gas pipelines. We have a lot of oil and gas exploration and production. We own a fabrication business. And so we're pretty diversified and integrated in the U.S. Uh, energy space. For us, the good news is, is that we were not part of the last 90 day crash because we were in the right position with the right assets. So it's always good to be in the right spot when everything else falls apart. So today we're gonna to take advantage of uh, giving you information on mineral rights and what you as a individual investor may find in value from personally looking at and considering mineral rights. They are an alternative investments and I'm gonna show you exactly what they look like. So let's see if I can make sure this clicks. Here we go. So first off, uh, as I mentioned, I am the owner and CEO of Eckerd Enterprises, and I have uh, had a great career for 35 years in the U.S. oil and gas industry. And let me tell you, it's, it's like a roller coaster at Six Flags. It's from $145 a barrel 10 years ago to negative $37 a barrel uh, 60 days ago. So there is a, a lot that goes on both in technology, commodity pricing, different ways in which you can invest in the energy space. But my career and the exposure that I've had both in drilling and seismic and exploration and production have all kind of brought me to a, a pinnacle of my career where minerals is what I believe is the best asset in the energy space to own. And I also believe that it gives an investor the greatest opportunity for cash flow, asset growth with the least amount of liability exposure. So what I want to do is just walk you through what it looks like. Uh, first off, what are mineral rights? And I think the answer is most people really don't know. Um, when you start talking about mineral rights, they start asking themselves, are we talking water or salt? Are we talking about gold or precious metals? And the answer is yes. Um, mineral rights basically are talking about the rights below the surface, and it pertains to natural resources that can be extracted from below the surface. So back in the land grant days when uh, uh, real estate was issued or, or given us real property, uh, the forefathers and those that granted those land rights really were not paying attention, or at least they were unaware what the future might hold. In fact, um, the way it works today is most real property owners have three different rights. They have surface rights, everything attached to the surface. They have air rights, everything not attached to the surface, but directly affecting uh, the geometrical dimensions above your property. So that would include air rights, uh, windmill, 
air currents, et cetera. And then you have mineralites, everything below the surface. And so there has been a real uh, change or evolution over the last uh, 20 years in which real estate owners started to understand that they owned a lot more than just that apartment building or that house or that industrial park. That sometimes that property actually sat on minerals that worth a lot of value. They just were unaware of it. So let's go through and show you how this works. First off, the United States has roughly 3.8 uh, million square miles of territory. It's a lot of land. And for us as a country, we have very few people covering that land. So there's a lot of open spaces. And in that open spaces just happens to be an enormous geological pool of oil and gas buried 3,000 feet to 20,000 feet below the surface. Um, when you look at 2.43 billion acres of land, the key thing about the United States is one of the only countries in the world that allows private ownership of the mineral rights. Most countries keep the mineral rights for the government itself, and you can only develop those mineral rights through concessions or government approval. So we have a very unique opportunity here in the United States to own mineral rights directly, whereas other countries do not allow that. Well, by pure luck or happenstance, those that were farmers, ranchers, they were originally the ones who settled the territories, um, they had no idea what lay below their feet. They didn't know if it was gold or silver or copper or oil and gas or any other type of natural resource. But as modern technology began to advance the discovery of these natural resources, effectively certain areas of the country became more prolific for different natural resource development. Well, in the oil and gas industry, there are certain areas of the country that for 75 to 100 years have been notorious for oil and gas exploration, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Mississippi, even California. And so in the uh, evolution of developing those mineral rights, um, a lot of rules and regulations were put in place. But the key thing that always bothered investors about mineral rights is one, they were scarce, hard to find, hard to invest in. But more importantly, it was almost like picking the winning ticket at a lottery. It was difficult to know which mineral rights to buy. Well, the industry itself has changed so much in the last 15 to 20 years that the risk of knowing or finding mineral rights has, in my opinion, has diminished by 80 or 90%. I mean, in other words, I'm not so worried about dry holes. It really has become a economical asset that follows along the same kind of parameters as let's say real estate, because mineral rights are in fact real estate. So what we wanna do is kind of just give you some visuals as to what's going on. And that way you can get your, your head around what a mineral right looks like. First off, mineral rights um, are just like real estate because they are, they're classified as real estate. So when you do a 1031 real estate exchange, you can exchange out of selling a piece of real estate right into mineral rights. In fact, mineral rights are deeded and titled just like real estate. So you go to the courthouse, you have a legal description, and I can, in fact, buy mineral rights below somebody else's building if they, in fact, did not own the surface, the air, and the mineral rights. They can effectively either sell me those, or I can buy those mineral rights from somebody else who retained them in a previous transaction. What is really interesting that if you can understand that not only above the surface, but below the surface, there's tremendous value. Uh, the first oil and gas shale play in the United States occurred underneath the city of Dallas and Fort Worth. Here we have this mega metroplex with eight or nine million people living, high density industrial uh, development. And a discovery was made south of Fort Worth that was in what's called the Barnett Shale. It's a reservoir about 5,000 5, feet below the surface, 500 foot thick. So it's like a 50 story building loaded with oil and gas sitting below the surface. And yet it's sitting with the surface being constricted by shopping malls, highways and, and buildings. But many of those real estate owners didn't realize when they bought their real estate that they never had the mineral rights peeled away. So they in fact owned the mineral rights of those natural gas reserves in the Barnett Shell below them. So you have homeowners associations today that 15 years ago, the oil company came to that homeowner association board and said, hey, we wanna lease your minerals underneath your subdivision. We're gonna drill a horizontal well and you guys are gonna get checks every single month for however much you own of this section of land that's producing oil and gas. And you have homeowners out there with a small home, you know, 2,000 square foot home, that's been getting revenue checks every single month for the last 15 to 20 years. So it truly is a dual revenue generator depending on where you're located and how much oil and gas reserves are in place. It's opened up the eyes to many across the country because it's not just a Texas thing. Uh, you have Ohio, Pennsylvania, you have Wyoming, North Dakota, you have Illinois, you have Michigan, you have Florida. You have massive number of states. In fact, if you look at the previous map, everything in light brown or dark brown covers big buried 
uh, basins loaded with organic material. And if I were to put a topography map on, on top or a surface cultural map, you're gonna find enormous amounts of cities and population uh, uh, aggregation sitting on top of these mineral rights. There's a lot of money being made. There's probably the highest growth in millionaires in the United States as a result of owning mineral rights and having oil and gas developments take place on their property. So let's take a look just so you can get a visual. This, you know, I, I, unfortunately I've done this business so long. I talk fast, unfortunately. Uh, my brain works 90 miles an hour. I assume that most people kind of understand what I'm saying. That's not true. So I'm learning to use visual analogies to try to help you understand what's going on below the surface. In this case, I'm using the modern day Grand Canyon. And when you take a look at the Grand Canyon, I believe this, the, the number I heard was it's like uh, nine atmospheres from the surface to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, which you're changing atmospheres as you go down. Well, if you took this same visual and go back to the map that I showed you previously, all of the brown and dark brown represents buried Grand Canyons that effectively have been developed because of tectonic movement, uh, geological faulting, and erosion millions of years ago. Well, when those canyons were filled up over time, the, the, the ocean tides moved without giving you a geology lesson. They were compacted with dead plants and animals over time that through thermal energy cooked and all that organic material turned into what we use today as oil and gas. So what the geologists, what the engineers, what the oil companies are looking at they're not trying to find a seven inch hole in the ground and get lucky that maybe what's down a mile and a half happens to be commercially viable with oil. They're saying we're dealing with probably in the neighborhood of over 100 million acres with 15 buried Grand Canyons where it's loaded with oil and gas. And that's exactly why the United States in the last 10 years has gone from being almost out of oil and gas in 2008 when oil prices ran to $145 a barrel. Today, we're the number one oil producer in the world. How do we do that in a decade? because we took the risk out. The geology was no longer an issue. It was more about developing mineral rights. And I'm gonna keep hammering on this. This is exploration, but we don't participate in exploration. We're mineral owners. We're the landlord of the property that oil companies or the tenants wanna come in and spend all their money and take all the risk to make us rich. That's why I like minerals. So let's talk about technology. Technology has what has changed the entire oil and gas industry. In fact, what we've done is we have been able to use much of the uh, information used in other industries, such as uh, NASA. We use a lot of their technology for guidance of our drill bits in the ground. We use triangulation, we use satellites. So when that drill bit goes straight down the ground, it's able to stay and go horizontally two to three miles in distance and stay within a zone that may be two or four foot thick. So we've taken the speculation, we've taken the uh, unanswered questions away, and through computer software and hardware, the oil and gas industry is using all that technology to perfect not only the finding of oil and gas, but the maximum extraction of oil and gas. So let's show you an example. This is what they refer to today as, as a walking drilling rig. Now, some of you may think, what is a walking drilling rig? This drilling rig probably sits 140 feet high off the ground to the top of the mast. It has all these moving components and parts. And when that drilling rig is finished, in order to move it to the next location, they used to have to take it completely apart, pick it up and transport it to the next location. It might take two to four days and it might take $200,000 worth of time and equipment to disassemble it and move it to another location. It could cost as much as a half a million dollars if you went to a completely different drill site. What they've done is they've taken the Star Wars component of saying we now have a walking rig. In the front of your screen at the bottom, you'll notice there's this nice little foot. And what they've done is they created one long pad site and they said when we're finished drilling the first well, we'll disconnect, we'll use these walking feet and we'll walk it 50 to 100 feet to the next drill site and they can do that in four to six hours. It's, in, it's enormous the amount of advantages the technology has had. When we go to the actual uh, extraction process, remember you and I are mineral owners. We're, we're only concerned about one thing. We own the oil and gas under the ground where that rig was located. We own the oil and gas under the ground without any liability. We take no drilling risk, we take zero cost exposure, zero environmental liability. The oil companies take 100% of the risk. So we're getting a free ride for somebody developing oil and gas we have underneath our property. And what we get is 15 to 25% of all future revenue for free. It's called a royalty distribution. So as I'm pointing out the technology, the advantage to you and I as mineral owners is as the oil companies continue to improve their extraction processes, they add technology to that process. They're simply getting more oil out of the ground faster, which makes us wealthier, 
higher income, higher return on investment mineral owners if we buy the right minerals. That's why it's really kind of a evolving market. In the last 10 years, it's gone from being not such a big deal to be in minerals to now, if you have access to minerals, it can be an incredible wealth builder as an alternative investment. So what you're looking at on the screen right now is horizontal drilling and frac stimulation. These big rigs are get put up in the air. They go down anywhere from five to seven, 9,000 feet vertically. And then they have equipment that turns that drill bit and they actually bend that pipe and they go sideways one to two to three miles. When they're finished drilling the well, they'll prepare the well for completion. All the completion is, put the media aside, it's very simply this. It is the ability for the oil companies to take sand and water and they go down and they inject it like a sandblast. They go in and take this tight shell rock that's been cooked over years and they crack it. If you go back to the visual that I had of the Grand Canyon, what it effectively is, is you're taking the sidewall of that Grand Canyon and you're blasting water and sand to crack it and create natural crevices so those oil and gas molecules can expand and come to the surface. So it takes horsepower. So what you see in the right hand screen is all these big trucks, all they're doing is they're giving us pressure. They're allowing us to inject the sand and water, natural material back into the well. And what it does is it takes my minerals, your minerals, those of us who own the minerals, and it says, look, you got a million barrels of oil in the ground. If I don't frack it, you have 100,000 barrels I can get out. If I frack it, I might get out 500,000 up to a million barrels of your reserves because all I'm doing is inducing the formation of which you own the minerals to give us what it has, the oil and gas. Don't have everything than gold mining or copper mining or any other type of natural resource. So let's give you what I like, which is the numbers. You and I, most of us are investors, we're not geologists. I mean, I think I'm a geologist, I've done this for 35 years, but I'm always a numbers person. My background was economics and finance, and I wanna know how things work from a monetary perspective. So when you look at minerals, the key thing to remember is, is that the oil and gas is in place. The safest place for our oil and gas investment the last 90 days as oil prices dropped was in the ground. We want the oil company to keep it there like a safety deposit box until it's time to produce that oil and gas whenever prices of oil and gas are at its peak. So what I've learned is that when you have a mineral asset, that asset is forever, it's like real estate, it's in perpetuity until you decide to sell it. The extraction process is up to my tenant, I'm the landlord, my tenant is Exxon or Marathon or Continental Resources, so it's a billion dollar company, and they're developing and drilling and, and extracting oil and gas and they're making all the financial decisions knowing very good and well, they're only getting maybe 80% of the revenue, 20% of the revenue belongs to me because I'm the mineral owner and I get paid that 20% every month. So I'm gonna give you an example how far the technology has really improved. And this again is mineral owners economic advantage. In upper right hand corners shows you a 2012 vintage well that was drilled using old technology. You see the little yellow bar that's on the screen that's the intended reservoir they were trying to drill horizontally in. And you see the black line, that's the horizontal displacement. It's all up and down, it's all over the place. And very little of it was actually in the yellow formation. That well, as an example, was on 87 months. It's made about 2.3 billion cubic feet of gas, very good well. And it generated about $4.7 million in revenue in 87 months. Now we look at the advancement in less than five or six years of how that technology has improved it. Now what we see is a 2019 vintage well in the bottom left-hand corner. That same well, same formation, you notice the black horizontal line going through the yellow reservoir, it's in zone 90% of the time because they use triangulation and modern technology with motherboards in the drill bit guiding that drill bit. The more your well bore is in the zone, the more of our minerals they are going to be able to successfully develop. And so what we end up with is a well that made basically 2.6 billion, almost the same amount quantity of gas but they got out $5.3 million in less than five months. Five months versus 87 months. Let's show you how it works out for the mineral owner. Okay, so this is you and me. We're the mineral owners. Mineral owners are the real winners because why? In the 2012 well, if we own the minerals under that well, we made $940,000, $45,000 in 87 months. In 2019, we would have made a million dollars in five months. I don't know about you, but I'll take my million dollars in five months versus taking it over 87 months. Now the key to this is both wells, both reservoirs have the same potential economic life. They'll both last 25 to 50 years. The modern technology that's developing the minerals that you and I can own as private investors, it simply means they've learned how to extract what's in the ground safer, faster, and larger quantities at a lower price of recovery. It's all to our advantage as a mineral. When I give you a comparison of what I call traditional real estate, and I always say traditional, Minerals are traditional, but 
if you asked a thousand uh, real estate owners or real estate investors, they're thinking apartment complexes, duplex, industrial parks. They're not thinking about mineral rights because it's essentially a brand new sector of real estate. When I give you the, the pros and cons, you can read it on the screen. I don't have to read it for you. Uh, we don't pay any property taxes. Some states like Texas have a small property tax. Where I'm buying my minerals in Oklahoma, there's no property tax. So I have no holding cost. Um, I don't have any monthly expenses. I never get a bill. Everything to me as a mineral owner in Oklahoma where I develop my minerals that I buy, I basically have a win-win. I get a free royalty check every month for 15 to 25% of every profit dollar made. I never pay a bill, I never pay expenses, I never get cash calls, I have no liability for environmental, I have no liability for plugging wells, I don't have to make any decision. I have Marathon, Exxon, big major oil companies who are out there developing with hundreds of millions of dollars the minerals that they've leased, at least for me, I'm the, I'm the landlord, they said we want to lease your minerals, they give me a check, once the wells come online, they say every month, top of the line, first one paid, that Eckerd guy, he's got 20% uh, of our royalty, so send him a check every month. It's never going to be subordinated because it is first off the top of the line when it comes to distribution before expenses, taxes, and liability. This is why minerals are such a phenomenal alternative investment. Now, let's talk about the extraction potential. So here's the big, big kicker that happened in the last decade. When they started horizontal drilling on minerals, they realized that the first well being drilled was probably the only well they were gonna get. When the engineers came in and started looking at the extraction, how much oil and gas was being taken from one single well, they started doing the calculation. They said, wait a minute, we thought we were getting 70% of the reserves in that particular mineral section, or not. We can tell by the pressure, we can tell by the rate of return, we can tell by the amount of extraction. So they drilled a second well, then a third well, then a fourth well. Some of these particular sections of land, many of them, are now a minimum of four to five wells per section, and some have as many as 24 to 36 wells on one mineral section of land. So I call it horsepower. For me, I, I grew up raising quarter horses, and I ride and I roped, and I did all the things you do as a, as a young cowboy from South Texas. And what I essentially was able to do was understand that, you know, if I have one buggy and one horse, that's great. But if I get myself eight Clydesdales and put them in front of that buggy, it's a whole different ballgame. Well, mineral right ownership is the same thing. I don't want to own minerals where I might have one well drill. It still can be very profitable, it can make me money, but I'm really looking as an alternative investment, something that can give me long-term, low risk, really truly deep value that can add a, an enormous change in my portfolio. I want a needle mover, something that's gonna give me some real uh, movement. So as this case goes on, the oil companies have so perfected their drilling, exploration, extraction, they're now clearly demonstrating what somebody five or six years ago saw as a one or two well mineral holding. Now it may be five to 25 wells, 24 wells per mineral holding, and that's changed the economics off the scale. Many, many private equity groups and large financial institutions uh, invested billions upon billions of dollars since 2008 into minerals. About a year and a half ago, they said, we've eaten at the trough, we've got all we can handle, and yet there's still 100 million acres left. It was perfect timing for me to take a real focus on mineral acquisitions two years ago, and that was the game changer. I'm gonna give you just an example. This is just a random example of minerals that we've acquired to show you the economics of it, because I think it's important as you look at in, as a retirement investment decision in alternative investments. Um, oil and gas varies based on commodity prices and extraction, but this is an example of a little package that, that we did as a company, so I'm not gonna promote the package. I just wanna use it as an economic example. Um, we're showing you a 60 month interval. If you bought the minerals today, you got about a half a year's worth of income left. By the time we buy the minerals, put them into notice to the oil company that we're the new owner, we might get one or two months revenue this year by the time it goes through the process. I mean, we're dealing with billion dollar oil company. Hey, Exxon, I'm a new owner. Exxon says, great, I'll, I'll put it in my file and we're gonna have you notified in 60 or 90 days. I get it. But once the wells are online and producing, if you look at like the second year 2021 rate of return, it's 47%. You go through the entire 60 month interval, including half a year in year 2025, that's still an annualized return of over 12%. I made 100% return on my invested capital. I've done it all through cash flow, and I still own the mineral. I own that piece of real estate free and clear. So, like a rent property, I buy the property, I would like a rate of return. I still want to own that property when I pay off the mortgage in 15 or 20 years. In this case, the, there is no mortgage, it's a cash purchase of a mineral right. And I'm just looking at the royalty every month, every year giving me a return on my principal investment. And then I now have a free and clear asset that's continued to generate revenue for 25 to 50 years. And I might have 10, 20, 30 additional wells, which could carry my rate of return out for the next 15 or 20 years. When I go to the bottom, 
this is one of the things that we always look at, which is what's my terminal value. In other words, if I held this mineral ownership for five years, got my rate of return, but I decided, yeah, I'm going to take my money because the real estate market's depressed. I could buy some great traditional real estate. So I'm going to go sell what I bought in 2020. If we give it just a one or one and a half value, meaning it's one to one and a half times more than we paid for it, we end up with a terminal value of 251% in five years. It's over 30% return per year. This is not in every mineral case, but it gives you an example how you benefit. You benefit when you lease your mineral and you get a payment up front for your lease payment. They don't pay monthly, they pay you all of it one time up front. You get revenue every single month for every drop of oil and gas sold, and then you have a value because it is a true uh, legally titled asset in real estate that you can sell. Now, one of the things that we look at is as a major valuation consideration in minerals, is can you make money in mineral acquisitions if oil's $20 a barrel? Can you make money when oil's at $80 a barrel? And the answer is yes. <laughs> From our standpoint, I like disruption in the market. When there's a downturn in oil and gas minerals and oil and gas industry like we've seen in the last 90 days, it is a perfect time for me because all the com competition has disappeared. So the question I have to use is, is what do we as a company, as an energy expert, what do we see as the market going forward? So you'll see an example of what we see for the market. We see $40 oil average for now to the end of the year, including the downturn. We see $50 next year and we're looking at $60 as kind of a template for the next three years. And then natural gas also has its variable prices. The reality of it is in the last 10 years, I've seen oil as high as $148 a barrel. I've seen oil as negative $37 a barrel. I've seen natural gas at $1.65 per thousand cubic feet. I've seen it almost $14 per thousand cubic feet. So as a natural resource that every single American, unless you're living out on top of a mountain in the middle of the wilderness, not even living in a tent, you're living on the rocks, every single thing you do every single day is based on a barrel of oil. The phone you use, the computer you use, the carpet you stand on, the clothes you have on, the wood that brought the truck of wood delivery to your house to make the house you're in. So we're looking at a sector of the economy that no matter what happens with COVID-19, COVID-2021, 20, 24, it's irrelevant. It's a su supply and demand issue. So what I like about minerals as an alternative investment, I own in oil and gas mineral rights with producing wells, the very substance that drives the US economy. So the reason why we've had such a great economy for the last eight years, uh, it, or let's, let's say the last four years, is because since we started having a real business growth minded kind of uh, forward motion, it's been also complemented because we have very low oil and gas prices and very low energy costs. So our current president loves oil cheap. He doesn't want it so cheap we go out of business. He likes it cheap, but he also understands that it is what drives the economy. So as far as supply and demand, minerals are gonna be in heavy, heavy demand the next 10 to 20 years as our economy grows, and very few people are gonna own the minerals because the oil and gas industry has imploded, less money coming into the industry means whoever owns producing wells, whoever owns producing minerals, are gonna own the very resource that drives this economy going forward, regardless of who wins the White House. It is a fundamental asset. So I'll wrap up by saying this, that uh, oil and gas mineral rights are the core number one asset. Exxon does not drill a single well in the United States without first negotiating the rights with the mineral owner to develop that mineral. And the first check written every single month, whether it's oil and gas, uh, uh, Marathon or Exxon or a small Johnny Brown geologist, the very first thing that happens every single month regardless is a check written to oil and gas mineral owners. And at this point, there's 8.5 million mineral owners in the United States. The projection is in the next 10 years, there'll be 22 million mineral owners receiving a check every 30 days. I hope you become one of those. As an entire a retirement investment decision, it is a great asset to put in your IRA because there's no cash drawdown, no capital costs, no reduction in value from the standpoint, you're not being pounded by holding costs or expenses. So I'm gonna turn it back to Tyler. We'll let uh, Brendan have a, a go at it. I'll take a drink of water and I'll sit back and listen. And, and thanks again, Tyler and Brendan for allowing me to go first. Hey, thanks, okay, Troy. Thanks so much, Troy. Yeah, so I'll turn it over to you, Brendan. You can- uh, Okay. Their PowerPoint slide there and get going. Waiting for the notification. There you go, there you go buddy. All right, um, screen one. All right, Troy, can you confirm you see everything here? Yep. Yes, sir, I can, see it. I, can see, I can see it clear. It's perfect. All right, awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, thank you, Troy. Uh, so there's some questions in there, but we'll definitely get them all uh, after we finish up here. 
Uh, so my name is Brendan Walsh. I work for Rocket Dollar. Uh, we're located in Austin, Texas. Um, you know, so just the story of oil and gas and mineral rights, it, you know, we have a lot of people in Texas here and, and uh, investors elsewhere that are interested in it, always asking me questions. Uh, even as a financial advisor, I get people trying to ask me questions about uh, mineral rights and oil and gas, and not really understand it. So that's why I really wanted to, uh, you know, excited about the partnership and uh, bring Troy and the, the whole crew of Eckerd in here. Uh, so about myself. Uh, graduated from the University of Wisconsin, grew up in the Midwest in Chicago, uh, started, got started as a financial advisor there, uh, and then educating people in uh, 401ks. Um, and I decided to come down to Austin, Texas to join our CEO, Henry Yoshida, because I really felt there was a uh, growth of alternatives and uh, opportunity in the side of the self-directed industry. Uh, so what do we offer? Uh, we offer three main products, a traditional IRA, a Roth, and a Solo K, and a few others. Uh, but the main point is we offer checkbook control. Uh, and I'm going to briefly go into what that is and what is a checkbook control self-directed IRA versus a direct custody checkbook, uh, direct custody IRA that allows you to invest in alternatives. Um, so this is what's called the IRA LLC or checkbook control. So a lot of, uh, you know, alternatives lingo already coming at you, but what really makes it different from a standard IRA that you're used to is that it has uh, an LLC and a bank account in it. And this structure ends up providing a lot more flexibility because for each one of our customers, uh, we create an LLC and appoint them as the manager of it. And then with a checkbook bank account, they get full control over where they're sending their money. So as long as you're following the IRS rules, the great part about this is that you don't have anyone else telling you what to do. Uh, if you see something at Eckerd and you're ready to move, uh, you can sign paperwork that day, send a wire uh, next day and start getting that investment. Uh, and the great part is, is that, you know, you're not limited to a certain asset class. Uh, you know, the IRS only bars a few, uh, few assets like uh, collectibles, like baseball cards and insurance and some really, uh, you know, weird tax situations. But past that, you know, the sky's really the limit. Uh, so a lot of our customers will come into us with a really good specialty. You know, maybe they that they're not the biggest stocks and bonds investor, that's not their favorite thing, but they really understand something like mineral rights, but they really wanna work with their friends and partners like Eckerd uh, to get into an asset like that. Okay, so checkbook control. Uh, just some quick pro cons about you know, us, and then I'll jump into direct custody, uh, you know, which uh, some customers at Eckerd have been using for a long time already. Uh, you know, usually it takes a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit longer to set up for a checkbook IRA, but after it's done, very easy to use. Uh, you have a, a bank account, you can send wires and transfers out to, to manage any of your investments. Um, you get you know, the whole wide world of asset classes to invest in. Uh, we have customers you know, doing mineral rights, uh, someone uh, invested in a play in Houston, hope that's you know, closed up before COVID. But uh, you know, timber in Portland, uh, we have farmers uh, investing in farms and equipment, renting that out. Um, and you know, the sky's really the limit. We have a lot of experts, even beer brewers and distillers coming to us that they don't know stocks and bonds, but, uh, or just investors that have been in stocks and bonds for a long time and really want to diversify out of the stock market, especially with recent market chaos. Um, you get a lot more direct ownership of the asset as the manager of the LLC. So there's no custodian at Rocket Dollar. As long as you're following the rules, we, we custody your LLC, but the custodian isn't constantly bugging you about which, which investments that you're picking. If you've got something you love, you're in it, and there's no one really holding you back and pulling you back in a tight leash. Uh, so again, you don't have to wait for any times for a custodial approval. So something like if, if uh, a drilling is happening, uh, you know, if someone really needs to sell their land quickly or real estate, you do not have to wait for someone at Rocket Dollar to release that funds or approve that investment. Sometimes that two weeks or even a few days can be really brutal and lose you an investment opportunity. Um, again, everything allowed by the IRS. And with a bank account, 
you know, some people have to get used to a bank account in their IRA and what that really means, but that bank account acts very similarly to a money market account in your stock trading account. Uh, you could put that cash out and purchase an investment. Then once you sell that investment, you can bring that back and redeploy that quickly to another asset. And it allows you to very quickly uh, you know, buy assets, manage assets, or, you know, even uh, send money to improve them. Uh, some just quick cons of checkbook control. You know, sometimes it has been more expensive to set up. Rocket Dollar, I'll get that in a little bit. We've really tried to bring that cost down. Sometimes lawyers were selling this for thousands of dollars. We thought, hey, that's that's really unfair. Um, and also, you know, it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of a learning curve to pick up. But once you get used to this part of checkbook control, we feel that uh, majority of our investors really find it to be a great advantage. Okay, and so this is direct custody, and uh, you know the the graph on the right side is obviously a lot simpler here. But uh, just like TD Ameritrade, just like Fidelity, there are trust companies and alternative uh, custody companies that will uh, help you uh, buy alternative assets like mineral rights. Uh, you know, sometimes they're easier to set up for a first time alt investor, uh, someone learning how to use a self-directed IRA. Uh, and sometimes the initial setup is less expensive uh, for at least the first asset. Um, and so you usually have to go through uh, a deal review process and you have to get this reviewed by the custodian. This is where that advantage of that checkbook control really comes in. If you're working with a self-directed uh, provider in Oklahoma, uh, you know, Texas, maybe Pennsylvania, they've probably seen mineral rights before. Uh, you know, they're very familiar. Their team will understand what you're talking about. Um, you know, but if you put an investment in, in front of an alternatives uh, trust custodian, they, they will actually take direct ownership of that asset and then send money out for you. So they have kind of an invested interest to make sure they understand the asset, they know what's going on, um, and that they feel comfortable with you owning that asset on their books. Um, so sometimes, you know, this can be really tough for a hard to value asset. Uh, you know, so there's, you know, Eckerd here has a fund and opportunities that they're working on and they can value. But if something strange comes in that you know is a very good idea, but you maybe can't vocalize that, probably bring together a ton of paperwork to really show and convince a team that's unfamiliar with it, you may get that investment request denied. And sometimes that's really frustrating for uh, customers that have rolled money into a custodian. They're all ready to go. Then all of a sudden they lose that investment opportunity or get barred from it because uh, the custodian says no. And uh, with direct custody, first investment, usually not too bad at many providers, but if you start racking up lots more investments into your uh, direct custody IRA, Without that LLC and that bank account efficiency there, sometimes custody partners can really uh, explode the fees in there. And uh, sometimes, you, you know, with these weird assets, uh, alternative assets, niche assets, they could just say, no, we don't handle any of these in that assets. And it, it's, it's no fault of yours. It could just be a bad experience that custodian had uh, with a certain uh, customer or maybe a certain investment provider that really wasn't doing their due diligence. Um, and so, you know, the checkbook control product was really our flagship product we launched first, but uh, Rocket Dollar will be launching new direct custody products, you know, in the fall here. And uh, we're already kind of demoing those and soft launching those for our customers. Uh, so more to come. Uh, and just one thing with the pricing, we've really tried to make it a lot simpler here. We have our entry level checkbook IRA. So the first one I went over, our flagship product for 360 bucks then 15 bucks a month, that kind of Netflix style pricing, uh, no asset fees, uh, you can have as many investments as you want to really make that a lot simpler to understand um, and clear expectations of pricing. And we just have a code here, you know, $50 off with sign up, just made one for ELA or Eckerd, either one. And uh, you know, these fees on the right here, that's from some of our competitors directly from their fee sheets. And this is why, you know, just a lot of customers have come to us just, hey, clearly present the fees. Let me understand what I'm getting in the beginning, the middle and end of the investment. Um, so now, uh, you know, we'll just go to questions and, uh, you know, Troy, you can pop back on here. I think we had some uh, great questions on, uh, uh, we'll let them come in, but one was on, uh, how do you actually acquire a mineral right? Because we know uh, 
the New York Stock Exchange doesn't quite exist for mineral rights. So how, how does one go and actually go buy and acquire mineral rights on the market? Well, what I think is very simple, a lot of people think it's very difficult, but uh, when you're able to uh, understand the expiration side of a business mm -hmm. and you kind of are able to put the parts of the puzzle together, it allows you to follow the leaders, the experts, the industry experts within the oil and gas industry to be able to know where they, Exxon, Marathon, the majors have decided mm -hmm. out of these millions of acres where they believe they should go spend 10 to $20 million to drill a single well. So we use an integrated uh, system of subscriptions uh, based software, uh, 35 years of drilling and said, all right, we've got 25 drilling rigs in 10 different counties. We then look at a number of things. We look at the, uh, the reserves that have been historically produced. We look at the reserves that are being produced today. We look at the extraction and quantity. We look at all this really complex information and we say, we've got this wide open uh, Sunday morning on Easter Sunday, eggs are all over the field, but which eggs got the, the winning ticket in it? And so yeah, what we've yeah. done is we've narrowed it down to very strict economic parameters. And so the answer to your question is, it takes a lot of expertise to know which mineral is better than another. And I think mm -hmm. that's where our company has had a massive advantage over anybody else because we're now buying minerals from guys who are buying minerals two years ago who don't have a clue what they were doing. They just were buying with the idea of flipping it. And now they're mm -hmm. stuck with minerals that don't make money and they have no idea what they paid for it. They have no idea how to get rid of it. And we see a lot of investors who've invested in minerals who didn't find the right expert to give them that direction. So yeah. So yeah. it's like anything, it's like real estate, Brendan. It's, it's really, it looks easy, but you got to find the right, right expert. You got to find a rocket dollar to help you with the right uh, uh, IRA and the right checkbook account because everybody else says they can do it, but they really don't. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's massive, you know? Um, here, so just looking at some of the other questions here. And now if anyone has more, feel free to pop them into the chat or the question and answer. Um, yeah, I, I saw quite a few on here myself. Tyler, do you want to ask them or you want me just to answer them as I see them up on the chat? Oh, yeah, so it's, it's up to you there. Um, I know there's a couple about, you know, um, how do you find yours? Where are they listed to, for sale at? I know you, you, you love that story about the, uh, the gas station. <laughs> uh, well, let, let me just say, you, you know, I think everybody will get a kick at this. Literally, um, people post minerals for sale, like on the, on the truck stop, on the bulletin board, when you go into the men's restaurant, and says, you know, I got three acres of minerals for sale. It's not hard to have, you know, every one of you on this, on this webinar has a house, 90% chance you own the minerals underneath the ground. So buying minerals is not hard. You can buy them on Craigslist, truck stop. I mean, you know, it's, it's easy. But reality is like the questions that are being asked on, on the chat is, all right, how do I know the price is right? How do I know that this green initiative isn't gonna make hydrocarbons less favorable? How do I know that the oil and gas company drilling the wells are not gonna pull all my oil out and go sell it for $10 a barrel? You know, these are all really good questions, but I'll try to capsulize the answer in one simple answer. So the smartest oil companies on the planet are who are drilling in Texas, Oklahoma, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, Louisiana. In fact, these companies that are so smart, the majority of most other countries like Saudi Arabia have asked us to come develop their fields through concessions. Mm -hmm. So what we know is two things. There's not a single oil well that would be drilled in this country if it didn't have a chance to make a profit commensurate with the risk that's taken. What you've seen in the last 90 days was a prime example. And so everybody can be a little bit more familiar. The oil and gas industry started having a major downturn in April of 2019. We went from 1,200 active rigs down to 700 drilling rigs. That's a 40% implosion in less than 12 months. So all COVID did was took a boxing competitor that was already on the ropes and gave it the punch and knocked them to their knees. It's a good thing, by the way. It takes all the riffraff, the sloppy managers, the poor run companies, the over in debt companies, and it removes them. Now what happens is as a mineral owner, now I have the most proficient, economically professional companies like Exxon, Marathon, the people that we buy minerals under. We don't buy minerals under Joe Willie Oil Company. We buy them under majors because here's the deal. When it came time to curtailing production and cutting back on what they produce to allow the lower demand because of COVID-19 to be absorbed, guess who's the one who cut back? The majors, Continental Resource, cutting all their production in North Dakota, said, I'm not selling my oil for $20 a barrel, I shut my wells in. 
I got plenty of cash and equity. Who are the ones that were crying? Who went to the state of Texas and said, we got to make everybody shut in so we can play fairly. It was all the broke, over-debted companies that shouldn't be in the business. So to answer your questions is first off, the green initiative is a joke. And let me tell you why, and I hope I don't offend anybody. I probably do, but here's why it's a joke. The reality is when oil prices get down into that $55 range like it was last year, wind, solar, and the other alternative energies are no longer economical. If they were not subsidized with billions of dollars from the federal government, not one single little bitty source of energy would ever come from a windmill again. The reality is, is that when you have cheap oil prices, it destroys the economics of all other types of alternative energy. So the green initiative only works if every single person turning on their car, electricity at home, says I'm willing to pay three times the price I'm paying today just so I can have a green initiative. That's not an issue. The second thing is oil and gas companies have become so proficient in what they're doing they have this carbon exchange, they're completing bigger wells. One thing to keep in mind, it used to take on average maybe 25 to 50 oil wells to equal what one horizontal well produces today. So we got rid of nine wells, nine locations, nine tank batteries, nine pipes, nine everything. So now it's one well equals 10 wells worth of former expiration exposure. So it's very environmental friendly compared to what it was 10 years ago. So oil is in favor. It's the cheapest, lowest source of energy across the planet. The whole globe burns oil every day. And most importantly is, if I, as the mineral buyer and owner, if I just give myself, kind of like buying bonds, I only buy triple A insured bonds. I never want to lose my money, but I'm going to buy minerals under Exxon, Marathon, Continental, Chevron. I'm not buying under Joe Willie Oil. So that should answer all three of those questions to a certain degree, but I'm more than willing to have you email me later on and ask me any question you want. I have a wealth of information. I sleep four hours a night and all I think about is making money off oil and gas and energy. So I pretty much is an insomniac. So I can't see the other questions, Tyler and Brendan, if there's more, that's the only ones I saw pop up. Yeah, yeah, that was my awesome. uh, I feel like we could Yeah, up. there's, there's a, um, I mean, you kind of, I think you kind of covered this a little bit, but when someone, the difference between real estate when it comes to uh, finding, you know, raw land or land, and uh, does it include the mineral rights? Does it not include the mineral rights? Um, well, for, for the, look, the, the, the IRA, the self-directed IRA uh, organizations out there have done a fantastic job getting people to put lazy, underutilized money that's in their retirement account to work. And Brendan's company is one that's mm -hmm. made it super easy. It's your check, your control. Rocket Dollar says, we are going to give you that control. So it's really, really good. I think the biggest issue is, Tyler, is that with, um, with oil and gas mineral rights, um, it is like real estate, except for one main thing. Um, you can have millions of acres. It's like going into, you know, downtown Austin and saying, you know, I got a drone. I flew over the city. And I see all this raw land. Well, I should easily be able to go develop that raw lot in between those two buildings. Well, then when you get on the ground, it's got a big creek in it. It can't be developed. It's bad, right? So the idea is, is that you're not trying to be the smartest guy in the room. You're trying to be a partner with the smartest guy in the room. I want to be a landlord underneath, you know, Neiman Marcus. Bad example, I know they filed bankruptcy, but I'm just saying, you know, a traditional big name, right? <laughs> I want to be a, a landlord underneath Exxon's wells. So you, you essentially approach it like real estate. Are you more speculative where you want to buy land where you think the new uh, highway is going to go? Or do you want to go get right in between Home Depot and Lowe's and take that, that piece of land and, and pay a higher price knowing there's no chance of the value going down? We are a value-driven mineral buyer, which means I'm not looking to be a speculator. I'm not guessing where they're going to go. I am literally going underneath minerals. And I'm going to give you this example so it helps Brendan and his audience. We will look under the records and we'll find where there are actual sections of producing property. And through the courthouse and through our team, we will notify all the mineral owners that are of record, just like real estate records. And we'll contact Nancy Smith, who lives in Seattle, Washington, who got an inheritance of mineral rights in Oklahoma, 20 years ago, and she has no clue. Grandpa Smith gave her mineral rights. And we'll call her and say, we understand you own minerals in Oklahoma at this section. Would you like to sell your mineral rights? I didn't even know I owned them. Well, you do. Would you like to sell them? I don't have a clue. What are they worth? We think they're worth $8,000 an acre. We can send you a check for $40,000. We've already run title, and you'll have a check in your hand in 30 days. Oh, my gosh, $40,000. I'd love to have that, right? You think it's unheard of. It's not. I've been in the business for 35 years. I got a call 10 years ago, a group in Colorado said, Mr. Ecker, you own minerals in the ground. I said, I do? I felt as dumb as some of the people I called because I had no clue, I own so many minerals. And effectively it's just because 
people lose sight of their assets. It's like finding a, a raw lot in the middle of downtown Austin. It's got weeds growing it. Brendan, you drive by it every day, go, what's wrong with that lot? And nobody yeah. else's call because they assume it's some smart real estate developer. You finally call and go, oh no, that was my uncle's property. I live in Seattle and he died. I'd like to get rid of it. Hell, I don't know how to do it. Well, I'll give you an offer. And also you just bought yourself one heck of a piece of real estate for 75% of the value or 25% of the value, 75% off. Yeah. We are working through the known information to identify the right minerals with the right value. And we're finding those off the radar asset opportunities. It's just because 35 years we've been doing this. Yeah. And, and try, so I live with, uh, I live with two geologists and just hearing about how ancient the records process is and mineral rights, it seems shocking in 2020, but compared <laughs> to uh, many alternatives that have a lot less sophisticated um, uh, markets and records are way ahead of mineral rights just because of the old school. Things are in dusty courthouses, down in file cabinets. Um, yeah, as you're saying, a grandma who doesn't even know she owns anything. And that's mm -hmm. why I really thought, you know, obviously oil and gas people could try and figure it out, but turning to experts to help navigate that market. Uh, Cause you know, how are you going to find something in a dusty courthouse or of, of Oklahoma or Texas without some maybe extra expertise or some knowledge. So lots of, uh, really cool ways to drive value into an old system. Yeah, and I think you're, you hit it right on the top of the head, Brendan. On one hand, the oil companies do not want to have knowledgeable or sophisticated mineral owners because they can negotiate a really cheap lease and they can give a really low royalty. I'm going to give you 10% royalty when the market's really 25%. That could be millions of dollars in differences, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a few companies out there online that are trying to promote minerals but when you really look at their website, what they're really doing is they're trying to trick mineral owners to think they're going to give them great advice so they can get maximum dollar. No, they're not. They're just trying to, they're creating a fly trap over when everybody else gets stuck and sells their minerals cheap, right? So one of the things that, that your, uh, your audience is looking at, our audience is looking at from an investment standpoint is, is there a, a reliable, fair, transparent way in which you can do mineral acquisitions? One of the ways that we do it, we have a small private high net worth group of clients, about 300 investors, some have been with me for 20 years. The way we do it is I literally will use my team, geology, seismic, everybody, all the components, land, legal. I actually go out and find the minerals that I want and I buy and pay for them. When my investors decide to invest, they're actually buying minerals I've already owned and paid for. So I'm so confident I bought them. Mm -hmm. And the idea there is, is that it's hard to find somebody with, with my level of expertise I'm willing to educate him. You don't ever have to invest in me at all. You don't ever have to write a check to my company. You just say, I just want to learn about it. We have so many videos and educational uh, platforms out there to teach you and train you and show you what's going on, not only as a mineral owner, but as a mineral investor, because here's why. The smarter you are, the more educated you are, the more serious you'll take minerals as a possible alternative investment. Then you can decide, is it my regular income? Is it my retirement account? Do I want to check my account with Rocket Dollar? How do I want to do it? We are all about making you smarter so you can navigate a very good uh, investment sector, but do it with really good people like Rocket Dollar, with Eckerd, or whoever else you may choose. It's about making you a smarter investor. That's why we do this stuff that we do. Okay. Yeah, really happy that uh, you know you tuned in for the education here today. Uh, so, yeah. Tyler, already closing closing comments, and then we'll probably I think wrap it up. Yeah, well, I wanted to uh, share one slide real quick with. Uh, Hopefully you don't hate me, Brendan, sharing your uh, extension here. But <laughs> just to who, who you can follow up with at Rocket Dollar. Uh, there's Brendan's contact information. Uh, David Days, our uh, business development manager. Um, and you know, after after the webinar concludes, we'll be sending this out to uh, the recorded version. Um, but please reach out. You know, if you have any questions when it comes to oil and gas about Eckerd, um, you know. Rocket Dollar, um, anything about the checkbook control. I know I'd definitely like to have a conversation with you, Brendan, offline with the, the direct custody and kind of hear more about that rollout. Um, definitely sounds pretty interesting when it comes to that. So, um, yes, well, any thanks, last Brendan, thoughts thanks, from Tyler, you guys? Really yeah, th thank you, everyone, yeah, for tuning no, in. Definitely. Right, you guys have a great definitely. day. Y'all be safe. Thank you. Take care.